The community property question from February of 1999 is a pretty run-of-the-mill, generic community property problem. It does test a few issues in vaguely novel ways, but basically this question is very much like many others that have appeared over the last several decades on the California Bar Exam. I admit, this question, like many community property questions, is something of a racehorse. You've got to be well organized and work efficiently to do a good job on this question under time constraints. Let's take a look at the call of the question. We see there are five different items. One, W's legal education and law degree, discuss. Two, the $10,000 balance on the educational loan, discuss. Three, H's art history degree, discuss. Well, well, wait a minute. Let's just stop for a moment here. We already know the key rule that relates to education. It's the 10-year rule. Once a marriage has lasted 10 years after a graduation date, there's a presumption that there's no need to compensate the community for anything related to the education. So how come they're giving it to us in three different ways? Well, we'll have to look at the facts to figure that out. Four, the vase, and five, the bonus. Well, we also know a lot about bonuses. They are deemed to be compensation. So if the bonus is paid at a time where this couple is married still or has yet to actually separate without hope of getting back together, well, then it's community property. And if it is given after the separation, probably it is separate property. Let's go to the top of this short question. And the very first thing we learn is that this is a non-California marriage. Presumably, it will become domiciled in California, but what this means is the bar examiners are testing quasi-community property, and the only real impact that has on our work together is, here, you really do need to have a paragraph or two up front explaining what quasi-community property is and filling in a couple of details about the law. And I think it is appropriate to do so up front because all the rest of the analysis follows the same way it does in an ordinary, non-quasi-community uh, property fact pattern. Back to paragraph 1. W began law school in August 91 and graduated in 94. Remember, we're dealing with a February 99 fact pattern. During this period, H worked as a stockbroker and earned a graduate degree in art history. W's $60,000 of law school tuition were paid $50,000 with an educational loan by H from bank. The remaining $10,000 was paid with H's wages, as were H's $15,000 tuition and W's $40,000 in living expenses while attending law school. Okay, we've got a fair number of details here, including a few that have dollar signs in front of them. But this isn't complicated stuff. We'll organize it carefully. We'll give the examiners straight answers. It looks like this is a short marriage. It looks as if the community will likely have some interest in both of these educations. As we discover in paragraph 2, when H and W moved to California in 1994, as soon as this marriage becomes domiciled in California, all of the previously separate property will be deemed quasi-community property. Okay, we're in 1994. W begins working uh, as an associate at a law firm. Husband continues to work as a stockbroker. In 96, H bought a Ming vase with his wages and gave it to W on her birthday. And we faced this issue before as well. A gift made during marriage paid for with community property. At W's suggestion, H bought a Chinese-style table for the living room on which to display the vase. They both frequently refer to the vase as our pride and joy. Well, maybe it's a good thing they didn't have kids. In paragraph 3, we learn about July of 1998. H and W separate, file for dissolution. It looks as if the marriage is over at the time of separation, although, of course, technically, the dissolution isn't complete until the appropriate papers are signed. But for property distribution purposes, the community ends when the cohabitation ends, unless they are seeking a reconciliation. At the time of this separation and dissolution filing, the balance on the educational loan was $10,000. On December 31, 98, W received a substantial year-end bonus from her firm. 
a judgment of dissolution was entered in January of 99, and then we get the five-part call of the question. All right, well, we're in a hurry because we've got so many issues to tackle, but it does look as if they will resolve in pretty typical and pretty straightforward ways. Also, I will acknowledge that although I'll give you a straight answer, which I think is the correct answer, this is yet another example of one of the majority of fact patterns where the examiners are much more interested in analysis than outcome. Although I do think there are correct answers to all of the questions presented here. The examiners were much more interested in analysis than in checking to make sure that everybody agrees with the quote-unquote correct answer. All right, let's take a look at the outline of issues. Like many community property questions, it can generate an outline that almost by itself looks like a pretty good answer. Obviously, we've got to fill in the blanks and do the analysis and explain the situation, but here, as in so many of the questions that we've looked at, organization is everything. And we'll see that the care with which one organizes an answer to a question like this one really pays dividends when it comes time to write. So let's have a look. First you'll see right up front that there will be a brief introduction about quasi-community property. We'll have a look at that when we get to the answer. First we focus on the wife's legal education and law degree, following the same format for all of these items as we followed before. We're talking about the source, the actions, and we reach a conclusion. With regard to the law degree, we've got quasi-community property earnings and a quasi-community property loan. The couple moves to California and domiciles here. We apply the 10-year rule and we conclude that the education of wife will be treated as a quasi-community property asset. Next, we consider the $10,000 balance on the educational loan. Now, here it's really a fairly interesting issue if you pause to think about it for a minute. The educational loan was taken out by the husband, not the wife. But once again, they moved to California. It's clear that the bank relied on the husband's credit, no doubt his income as a broker, in order to grant this loan. Still, the intent of the loan, as far as the couple is concerned, is to benefit husband and wife together. I think the correct answer clearly is that this debt also should be treated as a quasi-community property obligation. Next, we turn to the art history degree. Once again, the source, uh, the source is earnings of the husband, which would be considered separate property in the home state, but community property here in California. Once again, they move here, we apply the tenure rule, and again we conclude that the husband's education, or his supplemental education, will be deemed a quasi-community property asset. Next, we turn to the vase. Here, the husband has spent community property money on a birthday present. The, we focus on the actions, they already are a California domiciled marriage at this point. The issue becomes one of transmutation, and here we look back over really 20 years, or plus 20 plus years, that, to uh, requirements that transmutations be in writing. Here, I grant the facts make it kind of a close call. It's a gift. Well, how much of a gift is it really? Well, husband and wife refer to this vase as our pride and joy. I think you can conclude either way and be safe. But I would suggest that the correct answer is this vase is a community property asset, not the separate property of the wife. Finally, on the outline, we turn to the bonus. Here, it's, com it's considered to be a type of wages paid to the wife by her law firm. Here, we look at the actions and, again, all of this occurred after the couple had lived in California for some time, and the dissolution happens in the middle of the year. The papers are filed in July 98. I think one could reasonably make an argument either way, or even make an argument that a pro rata interest would be determined based on the amount of time that the wife was married as she earned this bonus. I prefer to conclude that the bonus is simply her separate property, because it was paid after the separation. Once again, I grant reasonable people can differ, and the Committee of Bar Examiners really didn't care what we decided here, so long as we made sense doing so. Fair enough. Well, let's have a look at my answer. We'll see. It's very similar to all the other community property answers presented for your perusal. 
but this is one of the comparatively infrequent questions that pose quasi-community property issues. So have a look. You'll see up front, I lead with two paragraphs that combine the facts of the case with the law of quasi-community property. The bottom line, in California, when the non-community property marriage becomes domiciled here, all of the property upon dissolution is treated exactly the same way it would be treated if the marriage had originated here. It's very simple, but we've got to get it off our chest before we proceed. In the answer, we focus on the wife's law degree, and here again, look at how clearly I indicate what the source is. I'm very specific about the facts, and I indicate up front that the loan is a separate topic to be considered later. Next, we consider the move to California. I dispose of this topic in just a couple of sentences. We include it because it makes sure that our story about each asset is complete. Next, we focus on the 10-year rule. Here, I actually recite the rule, and I apply it. The conclusion, husband should be entitled to reimbursement by the community for half of his $10,000 expenditure on the wife's education. He also will be entitled to a share of her law degree in an amount to be determined in the interest of justice. Remember, here in family law court in California, dissolutions are basically equity proceedings, and the bench officer, the judge, has the authority to do pretty much whatever he or she decides to, uh, with regard to making adjustments to achieve a fair result. The primary goal in family law court in California divorce cases is fairness. So, we move on to consider the $10,000 balance on the educational loan. Here again, the source is a loan taken out by the husband, and I'm very specific about the fact that this was an Illinois domiciled marriage at the time. Next, we focus again on the move to California. Here, again, I only take a couple of sentences, but I honestly think that this kind of standard format and basic approach is what it takes to write successful answers. And by the way, this format that I'm using here is quite common in the published answers that the Committee of Bar Examiners releases, and it should be. This is very similar to the format that every corporate bar review class uh, to operate in California since the 1970s has taken. There's nothing really novel going on here, nothing even terribly intellectual. We've got a good format, we are applying the facts to the law, and then we're moving on. Ultimately, with regard to the education loan, the loan was taken out to benefit the couple, not just the husband or the wife, and the bottom line, again, is upon dissolution, given how brief this marriage was, less than 10 years, we will deem the debt also to be a quasi-community property obligation. Next, we turn to the art degree obtained by the husband, and here, Although the analysis tracks slightly differently because of the facts, the answer is the same, for the same reasons. Here, rather than, a partially, fund, rather than partially funding the education from a loan, he just pays the $15,000 tuition out of his wages. And at the time of this education, or this supplemental education, this was an Illinois domiciled couple. But they moved to California. We apply the 10-year rule, and... Here again, the community is entitled to compensation for its share of the uh, community property, uh, or should I say quasi-community property, that was spent on this art history degree. For exactly the same reasons, it is entitled to compensation for the wife's law degree. Next, we focus on the vase, and here, this is simple analysis also, but it was a common mistake to skip over things or to squish it together in a way that makes it harder to digest. Now, keep in mind, it's almost always okay to squish material together so long as you cover all of the details. But to do so, you have to have faith that the grader will take the time to dissect it. And, you know, I think they do an honest and professional job. Still, I'd just as soon make it easy for them to skim and to see that we've done a very competent job. So, look at the vase, you'll see the source is community property wages spent by the husband to purchase this vase to celebrate wife's birthday. They already had moved to California, and then we focus on the transmutation issue. Here, oral transmutations are not allowed in California, and that's been the case since about 1985. 
So just giving this vase to the wife on her birthday does not serve to transmute it. And here again, even though there is a clear, correct answer, the Committee of Bar Examiners was far more concerned with the depth and quality of analysis than with whether or not the candidate actually knew what they were talking about. So next, we focus on the following action, the husband buying a Chinese table in order to display the vase properly. This also suggests that they considered it to be a joint asset. And they also both referred to it as our pride and joy. Now, I can tell you one big difference between my approach and those of the corporate bar review companies is I even put this phrase pride and joy in a heading. I quote it, I interpret it. It is a very common error to sort of make a paraphrase or an oblique reference to a detail that you can just as easily quote. And I think it's better journalism, better law practice, and it is absolutely more effective practice on the bar exam essays to use the real detail and then interpret it. So I conclude that the vase is community property, not the separate property of the wife. Finally, we turn to the bonus, and here again, we can have very different answers that will receive the same amount of credit. But let's carefully look at the facts. The bonus was paid to the wife by the firm. For much of the year that the bonus was paid over, the wife was still domiciled with the husband, and they had yet to file for dissolution. They moved to California some time ago. Now, in item B2, I focus on the date of the dissolution filing in July. And that's where we date the marriage as being over. The judgment of dissolution is entered in January 1999, and that's the official end to the marriage. And I acknowledge, right here in section B3, that if we were to deem the dissolution date the final date of the marriage, then the community, in fact, would be entitled to a share of this bonus it would be a community property asset. But I conclude that it would be better, more fair, to conclude that the check would be deemed separate property because of the date on which it was paid, not because it had been perhaps partly earned during marriage. So again, if you disagree with me, I wouldn't worry about it. Maybe you could even go to bed thinking that you were right and I am wrong. That's fine. What counts is organization, thoroughness, and, of course, careful analysis of the facts. Music